All right, I want to welcome on a special guest, Mac McClung from Texas Tech. I have been, I've been hyping you up for so goddamn long. I'm so happy. This, you're my like white whale this year. I needed you on the pod. You're killing it this year. What's up, bro? I uh, appreciate you having me, man. I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Oh, right, fantastic. I want to, I want to start off right away. So when you were in high school. I, obviously, I was I I knew you. Everyone knew you. Did you like feel like you had like six cocks walking around because you had like seven hundred thousand Instagram followers, especially in high school? If you have like a thousand, you're like, yo, I'm pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, no, it was weird. I'm I'm from a real small town, so like I didn't realize that like people knew me like they knew me until I got out of that small town. So I was in the small town just thinking, you know, I'm on the internet and all that. And then I started going places, and people were like, yo, you're Mac. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> It, it was it was very surreal, but no, I didn't even really notice it was it was that big until I got out. Well, the uh, the all time front runner we heard slid into your DMs. Uh, I know you're a fan of his, but I just happen to think he's uh, an all time front runner. Drake was DMing you, right? Right. Yeah. At yeah. a point, he was DMing me, asked for my jersey. Um, uh -huh. Super cool, super nice guy. Uh, um, <laughs> that's his that's his mo, man. He sees it. You know, no disrespect to you, but somebody starts succeeding, he's got to hitch his wagon. So I'm not really a big Drake guy. I think that's where we bump heads. But respect, bro. You're 17. You got yeah, a rap at DM in you. Drake, who's in your DMs? Ah, uh, Marty Marsh. <laughs> so what's that like when Drake's in your DMs? Are you screenshotting it and sending it to the world? Or is it just like a holy crap moment? He's in my DMs. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I kind of saw I was eating Zach's. And he's actually with my friends. And he, uh, my friends just saw me. He's like, bro, are you ever going to follow Drake back? And I was like what drake follows me like i didn't follow me and uh, so i got on there and I, I saw the dm and my friends freaked out it was it was a super cool moment just being a kid from from the middle of nowhere like someone like drake reaching out to you it's just it's it's really cool but yeah, i mean he's just he's a person just like all of us so i don't really look at um things like that in those terms that's just because you're like a professional pretty much like if I, anyone is in my dms I'm like oh this is pretty sick <laughs> Um, so we want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, your process of going to Texas tech. So what's the process like, like when, so you, you are transferring from Georgetown. Was it like right away? So many teams coming after you. Cause then you have to, is it like redoing everything? Like how you went to Georgetown, like visiting and talking to people or. Yeah. With the COVID I couldn't go anywhere. So it was really hard. Um, like I'm sure a lot of the great transfers, like, um, this year, when you put your name out, it is like it's crazy like everyone's calling you at the same time you're trying to make time trying to get some sleep trying to work out it, it was it was crazy for sure um but you know shout out to my parents they really helped me did we did a lot of research on every every school talked to every every coach a bunch of times and you know we just felt like texas tech was just it was just it, i just had to go there no matter if it was 20 hours away or what it just the place i had to be so you mentioned you're a Virginia guy. Of course, you started your college career in D.C. And now you're in Lubbock, Texas. What's the biggest difference? I'm sure there's plenty between Washington, D.C. and Lubbock. You know, it's kind of the set. No, I'm just kidding. It's, uh, <laughs> it's really different. Um, the people are different. The, the speed, I think, is the biggest in those big cities. You know, everybody's just doing what they got to do. But people, um, people here are just real friendly country people that, you know, I enjoy being around. So it's, it's been good so far. You uh, you grew up in a very athletic family, right? Your your dad was a player. I know your your sister was really good at soccer, right? I read that your dad used to have to throw you out of your gym, the gym so your sister could work out in peace. But the interesting thing I read at Christmas, you guys would make games to compete for your presents. You even had your own deal or no deal. What the hell <laughs> is that? And how did you play for Christmas presents? Yeah, I don't even remember all that. I don't. I don't. <laughs> what happened with that story but i don't know i remember the uh the gym thing and i would always give my sister a real hard time or try to like compete with her and do this and she's trying to work out on soccer and but i don't i don't know if the deal or no deal is true i don't i don't <laughs> all right well that gets probably to jake's next question about journalists <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh of course you hit that game winner against texas um and i think it was fran fraschilla was it fran interviewing yeah, yeah, him right. uh and then you said, I'm sorry, friend, my teammates want me to celebrate. Uh, so my question is, why do you disrespect journalists like that? <laughs> um, I didn't mean to. I think I just had to, had to weigh the options. My yeah. team, 
they were wait, looking at me like, come on, come on. And then my coach was like, come on. I was like, I got to go. So, you know, I didn't want to, I wanted to celebrate with them. I thought that would be best at the time. Me and Fran could, could figure it out later. A hundred percent. And I totally respect we, that decision. We talked to Fran after he goes, yeah, I was kind of happy he left. I thought it was so cool that he left. But also Jake's in a shirt and tie right now. He's going to fucking announce Jenga after this interview. So like, that's how much of a journalist this fucking guy is. <laughs> Gotta stay professional. And speaking of family, too, how many people ask you if Riff Raff's your cousin? Uh, just about everyone on <laughs> <Yep>. every <See? laughs> If he's my cousin. But um, we're not related. But, I mean, no matter what I say, people are going to say we're related. So I've just kind of given up, you know. If, if that's what they want to say, then it's cool with me. Just let it go. Yeah, that's exactly what you have yeah. to do. He's coming here, too. He's, Riff Raff's great. So no matter, even though he's not your cousin, he's your cousin. I'm, I'm going to let it go with that. <laughs> right. We're, we're – uh, we're big fans of Chris Beard. We think he's a great coach. Um, obviously, your first year playing with him. What has been the biggest addition to his game, or, or I'm sorry, to your game that he's put, you know, in, in your arsenal? Or I guess the biggest critique that he was like, "Hey Mac, I like what you're doing, but we got to change this." What's been the, uh, I guess, the biggest plus from from playing for Chris Beard? Yeah, I just I trust that guy so much. He um he literally just gave him giving me the the platform and the the whole um, map of how to how to make it and how to um improve what I need to improve on, like with the film room. Like he just he kind of just lays everything out for you that it's it's so true and he shows you why it's true and he he just works so hard that um you know he, he showed me so many things about my percentages and my um, my pace and and getting my teammates involved and and you know also winning. I think winning is the most important. That's all he cares about. That's all I care about. So that's the biggest thing I think is just learning how to win, um, close games and 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 stuff like that. We've discussed on this podcast pretty much every episode just the eliteness of the Big Twelve, right? Because you guys have six or seven NCAA tournament teams. Uh, the end of your regular season: Kansas, Oklahoma State, Texas. They're all probably going to the tournament. You're going to the tournament. Just speak about how the ins and outs of this gauntlet of a schedule is because you guys probably are the best conference in the country. Yeah, I think it's definitely, um, I, I think personally it is the best conference in the country. Um, every night, um, everyone's talented. Everyone has uh, great, great players and playmakers. I think the biggest thing is the teams that can get better and, and, and be the team that makes the, the fewest mistakes at the end of the game. That's the team that usually wins, as we can see in the tougher team. So it's it's definitely a battle, but, you know, I love it. This is what I feel like I'm built for, and I'm glad I'm, I'm in this conference. Going back to Chris Beard real fast, what was the locker room like when he was, like, on the floor on his ass, like, crying to the ref? Because that was my favorite moment the entire year. Because <laughs> he's fucking electric when he's going all out like that. Yeah, no doubt. He um he didn't say much after the game. I think he did that for us. He felt that we were being kind of messed messed up, and you know he did that just to have our back. So we appreciate it. But there wasn't much that we kind of, we got back in the film room the next day and had a four or five hour film session. So we, we got it. We got. <laughs> hey, that's what he did. <laughs> five hour film session. <laughs> you talked about it's a perfect segue. You talked about the film, and we've obviously said it. Like I mean, you're in the purest form a, a shooter. You know, like you get hot and, and you just start going, but. In the film review with, with Chris Beard, is there a little bit of a discussion as far as good shot, bad shot? Because it's difficult because obviously their best shot is, is giving the ball to their best player. And when you're feeling it, you may be pulling from 35. But in hindsight, has he helped you be like, hey, listen, this is when we might want to work a clock? Or how do those discussions go? Yeah, I think that's that's the biggest thing is the balance when you're when you're hot or you feel like you're taking over a game. Also, like I got to be able to make my teammates better as well um in, in those situations and turn down a good shot for me for a great shot for someone else and that's something i'm really really working on and i'm going to continue to get better at but i think that's that's a great question i think that's something that needs to be added even more to my game which i've been working on yeah because it's difficult you know you hit like three in a row it's like well yeah like let them let them just keep check keep pulling but you know afterwards and, and beard's such a good coach i was interested to see you know how that dialogue went i want you to keep shooting fuck chris oh, Beard. Yeah. Just, i want you to keep going when you're on fire i'm fucking getting fired up over here was it also weird like uh, when you came to texas tech where you're obviously your teammates gonna be open to you but like is it weird because like obviously everyone knew who you were was it a weird situation going or they just open open arms like ready to go yeah that's that's one of the things coach beard talked about was like you're going into a locker room like where the culture wants you here you know i feel like you know if i went some other places people like ah this is this guy's coming in like, you yeah. know, and no, nah, they, they all welcome me in. Like one of the guys, Kyle Edwards gave me his Jersey number just so I would come like, and he, um, he's a great player himself. So like that just shows his personality and like the team's culture about it. Like 
they just want to win, man. I'm, I'm lucky to be a part of it. Why yeah, do you wear number zero? Just curious. I just feel the most comfortable in it. I, I don't have anything like nobody can go. I'm like, no, I don't have anything. <laughs> it's just, uh, I don't know. People feel comfortable in different numbers. I, I love number zero. It's my favorite. So I did a lot of research on you before on just like how Pardon My Take does on Wikipedia, and you know you could change that. Did you really break your arm and uh, snowboarding, and that's when your shot got better? Yeah, I broke my <laughs> arm. I've never snowboarded before, and I went down like this crazy hill for the first time because one of my friends, won't do it and i was like yeah just <laughs> broke my arm real bad and i just changed my form one of my coaches at my high school helped me and you know it it, it kind of helped me in the long run have see we're the same exact person have i seen... chipped my tooth sledding yeah, man, and i got great. new teeth so we're exact same person very talented were... people yep mac have you seen the movie rookie of the year henry rowan gardner he broke his arm and then they became the Cubs' starting pitcher because of his form so very similar story but yours is real life that fucking movie stinks. What? It's the one. It's one of the most overrated movies that would never happen. His arm fucking stunk when it's when he didn't have it. Wouldn't have. So I take you haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, no, I have not seen it. All right, highly recommend. Um, so we talked a lot about the uniqueness of this college basketball season with COVID, right? Um, fans aren't present at the majority of these games, but Texas Tech is lucky because every time I'm watching a game, the fans are out. You guys have a limited capacity, and sometimes I have to do a double take and see, wait, is that piped in noise or is that real fans? And you, the Red, Red Raider fans are coming out swinging. You guys are loud. How much does that help, especially when you're going on the road and some teams may not have fans in the crowd? Yeah, I think it's big time. I, the atmosphere has been crazy for COVID. I think um, – I don't know if there's any team that has a, a following like we do during this COVID. So it's it's been great, and um, and we're lucky to be, have a fan section like we do. Um, so I don't know if you're declaring for the draft. I don't want to even I don't even want to know. But um, I'm gonna put you through a little bit of a test of what like when you have those Zoom conferences with like combine with, stuff. Yeah, the combine stuff. So quick questions. All right. Okay. I vax only, and hopefully no one else listens to this. That's come on the show. I only ask the best players this. So, when, <laughs> brace yourselves. <laughs> so, if you're in a hypothetical, you're in, uh, you either go to jail for 12 years with your best friend, or you okay. go and you won't get hurt. You could play sports, but it's 12 years no matter what. Or you go into the jungle with a monkey as your best friend, and you could talk to, and you get a care package every day, but you'll never ever talk to another human being again. What do you take? So I'm not getting out of the jungle. I'm going to be in the jungle the whole time. In the jungle the whole time. And you get a care package of food every day and you get shelter. But your best friend's a monkey. Yeah, no, I got to be with the boys. I was 12 years with the boys for sure. Yeah, it makes everyone's picked that besides me. <laughs> It's a wild question, but it is starting to get a theme that these guys are just tough. Yeah. <laughs> these guys are just tougher than us. Like, I ain't going to jail. Oh, everyone's like, I'm going, I can play basketball yeah. there. I can work out. It's like, I just want to be it's friends crazy. with a monkey, bro. Um, why isn't the inside of a glue bottle stick to each other? You know, I'm sure the people who built that um, figured that out. I'm not, I'm not too good with all that. I'm, I haven't, um, you know, made many things in my life, so um, I'm Very. not for sure. Very humble. Not bad. That's all I really got for you. That was only, I was really, it's really just two questions that I want to ask people. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have two more. Um, what would you say? It's, it's been a couple of months now. You're starting to guys get in your groove, and it seems like they're relying on you a little bit more. But what would you say is, I guess, the biggest thing you guys need to do or improve on to get back to the national championship game? Yeah, um, that's definitely the goal. Um, I think we got to come together a little more. I think we're, um, you know, a really bonded team. But on the court, we're going to come together a little more. We're going to fix our defensive problems. And, um, you know, personally, I think great players make other players great. So I think we got to work on that. Personally, I got to work on that um, and hold myself accountable for that. But I think those are the biggest things. So I have a question. Uh, going back to early January, uh, it was actually January 25th. So late January against West Virginia. Um, unfortunately, you miss a buzzer beater to win at West Virginia. But I'm not going to talk about that because I'm sure you don't want to. Um, after the game ends, the camera goes to the Texas Tech section. And there's this little kid with his arms crossed looking sad. And previously, they showed your family throughout. Are you related to him? Because he became an instant meme. He's a celebrity now. Yeah, that's my little brother. He thinks he's... <laughs> 
Oh, that, that was a little, little kid. Yes. Even, yeah. oh, I didn't even it looks that. like him. He's yeah, it does. I, I know that. I remember when it pan, we're like, that kid's fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. I would, I was, that's how I looked too. I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, did he appreciate the uh, spotlight for a little bit, even though you guys lost? Did that help? No, he loved it. Um, the funny thing was, uh, it was perfect timing, but I think it was about like a toy train. I don't even think it was about the game. <laughs> <laughs> what, did his train broke like as the game ended or something? Your mom took yeah, his train or something? It was perfect timing, though. Uh, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. That's I mean, they look like twins. Come on. No, yeah, I know. But that's now it's great. even funnier. It makes it even better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's hilarious. And uh, I guess we'll get out of here on this one. Big Cat, the only song that Big Cat can sing is Landslide that he performs publicly other than the national anthem. You're a big Fleetwood Mac fan. What's your favorite song? Yeah, I mean, Landslide is such a good song. I like, uh, right now, I've been listening to Everywhere. Um, okay. I love that song. Everyone loves Dreams and Landslide, but um, yeah, those are my favorites right now. Right now, I've been listening to Everywhere by Fleetwood Mac. Silver Silver Springs is a is a deep cut, too. The two people hate each other. They're performing it like staring at each other's face, and they hate each other. It's a good listen for you. Did you only right. listen to it because it has Mac in it? No, actually, my dad... <laughs> Um, then I just kind of like the vibe. Right. I love that. And just letting you know, the, watch out for Rico after this. So everyone we interview, he tries to get him in a hype group. Every time you hit a three, he'll start putting putting emojis in. He'll probably harass you somehow <laughs> online. So he started his podcast just so he can say he's friends with these people. So just watch <laughs> out, all right? <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you coming on. I have Again, Texas Tech is my – I. I think you guys are going to go far, at least uh, definitely to the Final Four. So good luck for the rest of the season, and we'll be in touch. All right, man? All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks a lot, Thanks, man. man. Thanks, Mac. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.